Hello friends, Namaskar. Any person who is at the verge of retirement, for him, one of the important retirement benefits is in form of leave encashment, which is on account of the leaves which are standing to his credit at the time of retirement. So a question comes that, okay, because there is a leave encashment taking place, there should also be substantial leave encashment related exemption available to the employee. In this regard, the exemption limit is proposed to be enhanced by the budget 2023 by Honorable Finance Minister from rupees 3 lakh to 25 lakh. So through this video, I am trying to clarify the related aspects, the related queries for the benefit of employees class who are more interested to know on this exemption aspect in a detailed manner. My dear friends, let me begin with the discussion on the provisions of section 10, clause 10 AA, wherein the leave and cashment related exemption is given and section 10 begins with income not included in total income, wherein it is written in computing total income of a previous year of any person, any income falling within any of the following sub clauses shall not be included. So which income will be exempt? Section 10, clause 10 AA, sub clause 1. Any payment received by an employee of central government, state government as cash equivalent of the leave salary in respect of period of earned leave at his credit at the time of his retirement, whether on superannuation or otherwise. So undoubtedly, state government employees, central government employees retiring, receiving any leave encashment for the earned leave which they had at to their credit, straight away fully exempt whatever is the quantum. But two, that is where the dispute was because number of employees who were pertaining to the public sector undertaking or banks or corporations or companies or private sector, therein what was the limit? Any payment to the nature referred to in sub clause 1 received by an employee other than an employee of central government state government in respect of so much of the period of earned leave at his credit at the time of his retirement whether on superannuation or otherwise as does not exceed 10 months calculated on the basis of average salary drawn by employee during the period of 10 months immediately preceding his retirement, whether on superannuation or otherwise, subject to such limit as central government may by notification in official gazette specific. So this limit was very important. That prime of visa, it was 10 months salary, which is basically 300 days salary or 300 days leave, which are usually converted at the time of retirement into leave encashment. But the point was this notification which was specifying the limit and mind you my dear friend this notification was last updated up to 2002. Thereafter there was no notification and in this notification the limit set was only 3 lakh which was creating a problem to the employees who were retiring that this 3 lakh is a very meager amount as compared to what the others might be receiving as a central or state government employee on exempt portion. Now let's have an interesting discussion on present limit versus, versus proposed limit uh, with reference to the notification. The present limit which was set through notification number 123 oblique 2002, it was dated 31st of May 2002 and which was providing a limit of rupees 3 lakh with effect from 2-4-1998. To prove my point, I am just picking up the relevant extract directly from that notification which said in exercise of the power conferred under sub clause 2 of clause 10 AA of section 10 of IT Act, the central government having regard to maximum amount receivable by its employee as cash equivalent of leave salary in respect of period of earned leave at their credit at the time of their retirement, whether superannuation or otherwise, hereby specifies the amount of rupees 3 lakh as the limit in relation to employees mentioned in that subclause who retire whether on superannuation or otherwise after 1st day of April 1990. So means effective 2nd of April 1998, the limit was set to rupees 3 lakh, but this notification came on 31st of May 2002. So there was a gap of around 3 years, rather 4 years my dear friend. Proposed limit will be 25 lakh. Now I am discussing the proposed limit which is said to be done 25 lakh, which is announced in the budget, but the effective date is not given, which will be notified. That is a very important aspect. So a question comes that, okay, Mr. Bhatia, let me know when this proposed limit of 25 lakh will be effective. Sir, I can't answer it as on date because this has to be, and I quote the date that I am preparing this video on 4th of Feb 2023, because even Honorable Finance Minister has said that we will notify the date. Now, if I take the example, last limit was effective 
2nd of April 1998, but declared somewhere around 31st of May 2002. So there was a retrospectivity involved in that notification. Why can't same be in respect of this notification also? Because some people say, okay, it has to be from 1st of April 2023. That is a very easy thing. But in recent past, or say for an example, if somebody retires up to 31st of March 2023, that is post the date of budget, then he or she will be able to enjoy exemption of rupees 3 lakh. Suppose they are receiving 22 lakh then. So this is a very big question which needs to be answered in context of that notification. So I am just waiting for that notification to be final to know that okay, whether it will have any kind of retrospectivity or not. At the end, my dear friends, I must congratulate to all non-government employee, including public sector employee, whose demand has been accepted to enhance this exemption limit from 3 lakh to 25 lakh. But I also say that this notification effective date is very important to know that where from, with effect from which date, this exemption would be actually 25 lakh and that is in the future to be decided by the government. So let's hope for the best. Thank you very much from my side for being with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.